So I have an update for you on Joe Biden's cabinet and it's not looking pretty. Kenneth Vogel of the New York Times says the following. He has venture capital executive Ronald Klain is going to be his chief of staff. Also in his administration is going to be former pharmaceutical and insurance lobbyist Steve Ricchetti, top Democrat recipient of big oil money, Cedric Richmond, co-founder of firm that represents pharma and private equity, um, Jen O'Malley Dillon. We're just getting started, ladies and gentlemen. We are just getting started. His administration is going to be a who's who of corporatists who have conflicts of interest. Now, I could already sense, you know, the things that people are saying and the objections to this. They're going to say something along the lines of, yeah, but it's better than Trump. Yeah, but Trump, you know, he put Ivanka and Jared in his cabinet. And then he also has the Goldman Sachs people and all the insiders. True. I'm not, I'm not doing this segment and like comparing it to Trump and saying like, well, isn't Biden so bad on this front and wasn't Trump good on this front? No, Trump was abysmal. Of course. Duh. That's not hard. That's a very easy thing to point out, a very easy thing to digest, a very easy thing to attack, and I've done it a million times. Of course I have. But that doesn't excuse any of what, anything of what Biden's doing here. I mean, you have to have oatmeal for brains to not understand that. And unfortunately, a lot of the responses to this tweet were, oh my God, disgusting. I wanted to shower after I read them. When my team does corruption, it's okay. Because it's better than Trump. Better than Trump. Better than Trump. There should be zero lobbyists in the administration, zero people with conflicts of interest, zero corrupt corporatists in the administration. Instead, he's going to pack his administration full of them. Now, listen, I hate to do this, but I kind of don't. All the people who are like, we're going to push him left. Hold your L, dog. I told you that wasn't going to happen. Listen, that, that says nothing about how you should have voted. Okay, as I said, you could make a case on the merits of who Joe Biden actually is that, yeah, he's a lesser evil than Trump. If you write down all the policy positions, there are more areas where a leftist would agree with Biden versus Trump. But I, I wanted people to be honest about the reality of it. So it's honest to make the case his neoliberal corporatism is preferable to Trump's neoconservative neo-authoritarianism right? Like, there's a case to be made on the merits, but instead a lot of lefties were not arguing on the merits. They were arguing in fantasy land, and they were arguing, and they were deluding themselves on purpose. And the argument was, no, no, it's okay, because we'll get them in there, and then we'll push them left. You ain't pushing them nowhere, son. You ain't pushing them nowhere. You ain't gonna do Dickie McGee's acts, all right? We see his record. We know the stuff he does. We know he wrote the crime bill. We know he, he um, was for the bankruptcy bill. We know he voted for the Iraq War. We know he voted for the Patriot Act. This is a moderate Republican. That's who we're dealing with. So again, if you want to make the case a moderate Republican is preferable to a far-right Republican, that's a fair case. Go right ahead. I'm not going to object to the points you make because you'll probably make a lot of accurate points. But I could not sit by and let people make, oh, we're going to push him left argument. You ain't pushing him nowhere. He's going to do exactly what we knew he was going to do every single step of the way. And so the way that you were supposed to deal with him is get concessions up front, Bernie. Bernie. Bernie's out there doing a campaign in the media to try to become labor secretary. You could have gotten that as a guarantee in a meeting with Biden before you dropped out. Hey, Joe, I want to drop out and I want to help you and I want to campaign for you and I want to make sure my 30% block of the party is 100% on board with you. But maybe I just sit on the sidelines and you're on your own and I don't campaign and try to get my 30% block on your side. If you don't reach, if you don't give me this list of demands... Here's my 10 executive orders. Here's the position I want. He didn't do that. He did everything Joe wanted up front. And then afterwards, it's like, can you please, maybe if you, if it wouldn't be too much of a bother, I'd maybe like to be labor secretary. And maybe I'd like to tell you if, you, if you'd be kind enough to do these executive orders. You had to get it up. He would have made a deal. He would have made a deal. Now, he wouldn't have given you 10 of 10 executive orders. Maybe he'd give you 5 of the 10. Maybe he'd just give you 3 of the 10. Maybe he'd be the biggest dick on the planet and only give you 2 of the 10. But that's still two tangible things. You could go to the Democratic, your base, and say, look, look what I got. Look what I got. Also, by the way, maybe I have a position in the administration. 
You know, maybe I negotiated a position in the administration for myself because who you who's on your staff is actually just as important, if not more important than policy, because it's an indication of the kind of arguments that you know they're going to have behind the scenes. And then, you know, there's a chance for a left wing argument to win if a left winger is in the room and if a left winger is in a position of power and authority. Instead, you got no concessions. You deluded yourself. We're going to push them left. And now you got this. Congratulations. Congratulations. I'm putting the cart before the horse and doing this exactly backwards. Exactly backwards. Give him everything he wants and then hope later on he does the right... What? What? Here you go. Here you go. Venture capital executives, pharmaceutical and insurance lobbyists, big oil money recipients. I can't, man. I can't. It drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. We're at a point in history which is crying out screaming out for a new FDR. We need a new, new deal. Instead, what we got is business as usual. We got Barack Obama 2.0, or we got Bill Clinton 3.0. Because Barack Obama was Bill Clinton 2.0. We got neoliberal corporatism, third-way politics, triangulation, at a time where we need a social democratic flamethrower like FDR. Who's going to crack skulls and take no shit. This is an indication of what he's going to do as president, just so you know. So listen, I said it before, I'll say it again. His first day or his first week will be the best. Where he'll do executive orders that are decent, that are good. Get us back in the Paris Climate Agreement, things of that nature. Reverse the things that Trump did when Trump deregulated. So bring back regulations for coal plants, for example. Clean up the water supply. There's good stuff that's going to happen in the first day or week. After that, buckle up. Because these guys are just itching to work with Republicans and make deals and give them what they want and then pretend, pretend like, oh, we're the serious adults who get real stuff done, like cutting Social Security and Medicare and pretending like we needed to do it and we're just reforming it. Uh... Oh. Pain is all I know. <laughs> 